Let us pray. Our God, we thank you for today. We thank you for what you have already done. Thank you for the way you manifested your power. The first miracle revival hour in the morning. And also at the second miracle revival hour this evening. We are praying that you will bless all your people that are here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for these wonderful testimonies we have just heard. What you have done for these and much more. Do for every other people in Jesus' name. Amen. Magnify your holy name. Amen. Bless all the people that are here tonight. And by the time we are living here tonight, let the people be filled with your joy and with testimonies in their mouths in Jesus' name. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we are talking on how to release faith after prayer. Many people in the church, that is in a large church all over the world, has emphasized prayer. But very many times, these people that emphasize prayer, they emphasize prayer without faith. And yet, whenever we pray, faith is the hand that reaches out and takes the blessing we are praying for. Without the faith, it appears that the hand of prayer is laid. And the hand of prayer cannot take anything. Even though it is provided, even though the prayers have been said, Without that faith, it looks like man is still helpless. That is why faith is very, very important. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says, But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Many, many people pray, but few receive answers to their prayers. Few ever receive healing on their own. Or few receive deliverances and miracles. That means that prayer alone is not enough. Faith must combine with that prayer. Very few ever move a mountain with their prayer in a lifetime. And it is because many people pray without releasing their faith. Many even fast. But because they fast without praying in faith, their fasting does little for them. But the Bible makes it clear that if we ever want to receive answers to our prayers, we must believe. And sometimes we need to stop praying and start believing. Many times Jesus emphasized faith. If you look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 13. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Not as thou hast prayed, as thou hast believed. As thou hast believed. In Matthew chapter 15. Reading verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, not thy prayer, great is thy faith, be it done unto thee, be it unto thee, as thou wilt. Remember, on the basis of faith. In Mark chapter 5, Verse 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith, not thy prayer, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. So until we manifest faith, we may discover that what we are asking for is not granted. In Mark, Chapter 10, 
verses 51 and 52. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith, not thy prayer, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received a sight and followed Jesus in the way. Luke chapter 7, verse 50. And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Luke chapter 17, verse 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. So you can see in various parts of people's encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, he placed the emphasis on faith. And whenever his disciples missed a miracle, even though they had called on him, they had cried to him, they had bothered him, they had told him they do not want to perish, Master, Master, save us or we perish, all the time Jesus said, where is your faith? Even though they had prayed, even though they had shown their desire, even though they had cried unto him, every time he told them, where is your faith? Or where, why are you of little faith? And for those who are still praying today who are not manifesting faith or releasing their faith, the Lord is still saying, where is your faith? Because what the Lord is looking for whenever we pray is that we actually believe. Now I want to show you an example or two of those who pray without releasing faith. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, reading from verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Here Peter got into trouble. It was great persecution. He had been imprisoned. And the church did what they ought to do. The church started praying. And they prayed without ceasing. And they prayed unto the Lord God in heaven. And they were praying specifically for Peter. Those things are very important. Trouble came. They knew they could not uh, do anything against this trouble, except the Lord will come to rescue Peter. And therefore the whole church began to pray. And there was importunate praying. They kept, they kept on praying and praying and praying and praying. Praying without ceasing. And they prayed to the right personality, to God in heaven. And they were praying for Peter alone. And then... We're told that God in his miraculous way, he sent an angel and delivered Peter. And when Peter considered where to go, he went to one of the places where they were praying in verse 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Many were gathered together praying. But now see what happened. These were people that prayed without releasing their faith. These were people that just called upon the Lord without believing that the prayer has been answered. Now Peter had been delivered. Prayer had been answered. But in verse 13, as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel called, came to her king, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And he said unto her, Thou art mad. Did they believe that Peter had been delivered from the prison? No. What were they praying for? That Peter would be delivered from prison? They never released their faith. They were still praying, Oh God, deliver Peter. And Peter had been delivered. Oh God, send Peter out of the prison, and Peter had been sent out of the prison, and yet they kept on praying and praying and praying, and Peter was at the gate. But they did not release their faith. 
And Rhoda came and he said, I heard Peter's voice. I believe that the prayer has been answered. Let's stop praying and start believing. Let's stop praying and start rejoicing. Let's stop praying and receive the answer. Let's stop praying and open the gate and let Peter come in. Oh, they said, you are mad. Then in verse 15, but she constantly affirmed that what it was even so. Then said they, it is his angel. Still they will not release their faith. And they will still keep on praying. How many people continue to pray and pray and pray? And the miracle has been released unto them. And the miracle is just by their side. And the gate for the miracle has been opened. It only remains under they release their face and open the door and stretch out their hand and pull the miracle in. But no, they keep on praying. The miracle is knocking at the door saying, I have come. The Lord has answered your prayer. Open the gate so that I may come in. And the miracle that you are praying for, they keep on praying. And the Lord has already given the answer. But they are still saying, oh God, I know you are a God of love. You are a God of mercy. I know you are a faithful God. Come and answer me. And the answer is waiting at the gate. Oh Lord, do not forget me. Don't let me come to shame. You know, I've been talking to you. I know your promises and yea and amen. And the answer is waiting at the gate. All they need to do is stop praying. Start believing. Open the door. And let the miracle come in. But no, they keep on praying. And then they will fast. The answer is waiting at the gate for them. And he'll say, God, you see, Jesus said this kind of quest not all about prayer and fasting. And I am fasting to tell you how serious I am. I'm looking for this miracle. And the miracle is at the gate. And the miracle is knocking, saying, stop praying and start believing. God has answered your prayer. All you need to do now is to release your faith and let Peter come in. Let the miracle come in. In verse 16. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. They were surprised. Really surprised. Surprised that their prayer had been answered. Which shows you that they were not releasing their faith. And you know there are churches where they emphasize prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer in the church, prayer in the house, prayer on the mountain, prayer on the road, prayer everywhere. But they never mention faith. They do not tell the people when to stop praying and start believing. They do not tell the people how to release their faith out of prayer. And because of that, many, many will pray and they will never receive answers to their prayers because they are locking the gate against the miracle, against the answer. Just like these people were doing Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. Now in um, Exodus chapter 14. This was the time that the children of Israel had been released from Egypt. But then the Egyptians and Pharaoh determined that they were going to bring them back or destroy them wherever they meet them. And therefore Pharaoh and the soldiers or the chariots and the horsemen, they went after the children of Israel. When the children of Israel saw them, they were afraid, they panicked. And because of the fear that gripped their hearts, they began to say, Lord, what's the matter now? And then Moses, look at what you have brought us into now. And um, like every man of God should do, Moses started praying. But he went on praying and praying and praying until God stopped him. And God said, Moses, that prayer is enough. Release your faith. And you know there are people that, you know, continue like that. They cry, they weep, they pray, they roll, they do everything. And God is saying, stop praying, start believing. That prayer is enough. Release your faith. Look at Exodus chapter 14, verse 15 and verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. That means God was saying, Moses, that prayer is enough. I've answered. Release your faith. Go forward. Suppose Moses at that time knelt down, closed his eyes, and, you know, started agonizing and praying, saying, Oh God, 
have mercy upon the children of Israel. And God all the time is saying, stop praying, start believing, release your faith. Why Christ thou unto me? Let the children of Israel go forward. And Moses continue praying, oh God, don't let the children of Israel come to shame. Don't let Pharaoh come on us. And God was saying, stop praying, start believing. And he continued praying, oh God, we love you. Oh God, we consecrate unto you. If you deliver us from the, from this Egyptian army, we shall serve you all the rest of our lives. And God was saying, Moses, why Christ down to me? Stop praying, start believing. And he said, oh God, what do you want us to do? Are we not praying enough? Are we not fasting enough? Are we not holy enough? Oh God, have mercy on us. You are not uh, happy that we will perish like this. You are a faithful God. Your promises are here and amen. God, just praying and praying. And God was saying, Moses, stop praying. Start believing. You know, that's what many believers do. They pray, 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 and pray. No faith. No faith. They just keep on praying. Keep on shouting. Keep on crying. Keep on weeping. Keep on reminding the Lord. You said you will do this. You said you will do that. And God all the time is saying, Why Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Release your faith. But lift, lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And you know, I've found there many people that take a delight in how many hours they pray. No faith. You know, but they just pray by the hour, and they say, yes, I thank God now, I pray more than ever before. I cry when I pray. I cry more than ever before. And you know, I can kneel down now for three hours and not feel the pain on my knees at all. That's the joy of those Christians. Oh, thank God, you know, whenever I hear a message, I pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Their joy is in the fact that they can pray, they can groan, they can agonize without ever realizing anything. But the Lord is saying, when are you going to believe? When are you going to just release your faith? Because it is a faith that matters in the prayer. It is a prayer of faith that shall save the seed. It is not just the prayer alone, but the prayer of faith that will save the seed. And now in verse 21, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by his strongest wind all that night and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Uh, you know, all these, um, all these people, they learned the secret. People like Moses. Then the disciples as well, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, they learned the secret. That you must release your faith when you pray. And that is the secret of answered prayer. That is the secret of miracle. And um, as you listen to the word of God and do what I'm telling you, you can release your faith anywhere, whenever you pray, whether in church or outside the church. In your house, whenever there's trouble, you can pray and then release your faith and wonderful, wonderful things will happen. I was um, away last uh, weekend, Friday and Saturday. We had what we call miracle service. And the church was packed full. And all the open space packed full. And some people around uh, that place that have uh, land uh, and they planted, you know, they, the land just went like that. Uh, land belonging to the church and land uh, not belonging to the church. The people just filled the place. Many, many type of people there. People having tumor, people having a uh, near people that were lame, uh, children that were, uh, you know, possessed of devils. Many, many people were there. And uh, the Lord... Um, Help me to give them a message on Friday night. And I, I told them that as soon as I finish my message that the miracle have traveled uh, down all the time. I told them the moment I start my message just saying, uh, open this verse, open that verse, that already the gate of heaven is uh, open and the miracle start traveling down. And they believed it. You know, I've not been there for, I think, for two years now. But uh, those people, many of them had never seen me before except seeing me on television. And I told them that when I open my mouth and begin to preach, that the miracle will be traveling down. 
and that when I finish my point one, the miracle will travel mile one. When I finish my, my point two, the miracle will travel point uh, mile two. And when I finish my last point, the miracle will travel the last mile and then be sitting by your side before I even pray. And you know they believed it. And I said, when I pray for you and you hear Amen, the miracle will jump out of your side and jump into your body. You know they believed it. They be and I believed it myself when I was saying it. And then I said, now let us pray. The miracle has traveled from heaven and it's now by your side where you're sitting. And he said, Amen. I said, now when I pray, you hear the last Amen. The miracle will come into your body and you'll sit there. So we say now those of you who are blind, uh, raise up your hand and they raise up their hands. And I prayed. You know, in Lagos here, when I pray for the blind, sometimes I have to wait for one minute. Say, now open your eyes, encouraging you. If you open your eyes, now you will see. Just open your eyes, you know, I'll continue seeing those things. And then one of them will open their eyes and they'll see. But that day at Elon on Friday, just last week, when I finished my prayer like this and the people said, Amen, then there was a shout. Somebody said, I can see, I can see, I can see. Another person in another part of the... Six people. Six people that same night, just, their eyes just got opened. And there was a boy that, uh, a boy of six years, since that child was born, the urine was coming out every minute of the day and the night. Not only in the day, not only in the afternoon, not only in the evening, not only in the night. This is not just bedwetting. Every minute of the whole day, of the whole week, of the whole month, of the year, since the child was born, the urine was just be coming out. And they'll be changing, uh, they'll be changing the pants and the, and the trousers for the boy. And that night I just said, just lay your hand upon that child. And I prayed and they brought that child the second day. And they said, since the prayer last night, not a single drop of, of, uh, of urine. And the mother said, look at my child, that since the child was born, if you put any clothes on the child before, you, before one hour, the whole clothes is wet, you have to change it again. But since last night, nothing at all, at all, at all. God is a wonderful God. You know, there was a, I told the people that anything that is swollen in your body, and yeah, goiter, anything at all, just place your hand there. Remember, the miracle is by your side. You know, that's, I was releasing my faith. After we pray and then we release faith. Because, you know, if you don't release your faith, the miracle will not happen. And then I just, uh, you know, I just prayed like that and I said, Amen. And I said, the miracle is there. And the people started coming forward. The people that had things swollen in their body, immediately the thing had gone. Then there was an old woman who came to give testimony on Saturday because she was still there on Saturday morning. She said she was there on Friday night. You know what happened to her? She has been bent all over. The spinal cord was bent. She couldn't stand up straight like um, I'm standing up now. And uh, she couldn't go on places to, uh, to places by herself alone. For 15 years it had been like that. It was just like the case of uh, the woman that had the spirit of infirmity in the Bible in Luke chapter 13. Who had been bent over like that for 18 years. But her own was not 18 years but 15 years. But what's the difference? If somebody has been suffering for 15 years or somebody suffering for 18 years, it's like a long, long time with that person. And she said she came that Friday night and we just prayed like that, just prayed like that. And all of a sudden, the woman stood up and the woman walked straight. And when she came on Saturday morning and gave testimony, she said when she was coming to church on Friday night, the people in her yard, they were laughing. They were saying, ah, mama, you want to go and disgrace yourself. They talk about miracle. It's not a miracle of this capacity. The miracle cannot happen to straighten your bone. The bone that has been, that the doctors could not straighten in the hospital. That miracle cannot do it. She walked back home that Friday night and they looked at her. They almost fainted when she got home. Because a great miracle had happened. You know, that's why I came to teach you tonight how to release your own faith. Whenever you pray. So that you don't just continue praying and praying and praying and praying. Praying and praying and praying. You just release your faith. Somebody was telling me just uh, last week. That I was invited to the television house here in Lagos to come and give a program and I went with um, some of the members of the choir here 
It was, I think, a Saturday morning. And while I was there, a woman came to me and uh, right in the open there and said, uh, you are the man that has been seen on television. You are so and so. I said, yes. She said, uh, pray for me. I said, what's the problem? She said, I've been married uh, for and a half years and there is no child. And right there in the compound of the television people, I said, kneel down. She knelt down and I prayed. And when we finished prayer, I looked at her. I said, woman, look at me. She did. I said, I give you only two months. Be pregnant. I said, you heard. And she went away. And I said, start coming to church. She was giving the testimony to one sister. And she said, the man of God told me two months at the television house. And the two months did not pass. I got pregnant. You know, release your faith. It's not just praying and praying and praying. Release your faith when you pray. And as you release your faith, a miracle will come unto you in Jesus' name. How do you relieve, release your faith after you have prayed? Number one, believe. In Luke chapter 1, verse 45, And blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. The moment you believe, there will be a performance of those things which were spoken by the Lord. That's how to release your faith. You have prayed. You have made your need known unto God. You have said, God, this is my need then. Just believe that very moment. Believe that very moment. Because blessed, blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. In uh, Mark chapter 11 verse 23. Number two, doubt not. That's related to the first one, believe and then doubt not. Whatever thought may be coming to your mind, doubt not. Whatever you may see after that, doubt not. Whatever the symptoms that may come on your body or be suggested, whatever thing may be suggested to your mind, doubt not. Believe and doubt not. That's how to release your faith. In Mark chapter 11 verse, 20, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he say. Doubt not in his heart. Doubt not in his heart. Doubt not in his heart. So how do you release faith? Number one, believe it. After you have prayed, just believe. You know, that's uh, there was somebody that saw me in the morning. She, he told me that uh, we were students together, long time now, 20 years ago at the university. And uh, she was asking me, but... Why didn't you uh, take me along uh, to church uh, 20 years ago when we were at the university? I said, but I didn't know you at that time. She said, but I was in a hall like this and I knew uh, Mr. So-and-so, your friend. I knew so-and-so, your friend. Yes, but I know that I, I didn't know you intimately. And uh, But in any case, you didn't get it at that time. You are getting it. But you know what happened? She said, uh, yesterday, he had uh, been having serious, serious problem. Serious problem. And in the night, in the evening, Wednesday, yesterday, he looked at the uh, television program. And yesterday I was talking on prayer and faith. And uh, he said he slept. And in the night, in the dead of the night, he said that uh, his hand was being paralyzed. A stroke was coming onto, on him. And his hand was being twisted. And he said, ah, is this how a stroke will take place? Then he remembered the television program he watched uh, in the evening on Wednesday, just last night. And then he laid his hand on that place and he said, In the name of Jesus, my hand, come back. And the hand came back. <laughs> and everything became okay. And when the morning came today, he started running to church and he came to this place and said, If that thing happened, when I want that thing on prayer and faith, I'm going to get into that church myself. And he came here today and he told me the testimony after the first miracle revival hour. Release your faith. A miracle is ready by your side. 
you know, the person that received the site today at the Yoruba class there, today is the first time he's, he has never been here at all, at all. And uh, I didn't, uh, you know, pray long, long prayer. In fact, I just prayed for everybody. I just said, whatever you need, I'm releasing my face now. It is so in Jesus' name. And I said, Amen. I went to sit down. And I heard the people there singing and clapping. And they won't go again. And they were bringing the mouth forward. They said, the mouth was blind before. The first time of coming. The first time of coming. And the eyes had been opened. You know, God is a wonderful God. Now, believe. Number two, doubt it not. Number three, see it done. See it done. See it done. If you are sick, see yourself well. If you are jobless, see yourself waking up in the morning, going to the office, putting on your tie, putting on your suit, and having a good job. If there is, a, if there is no money on you, see yourself having, having money in your pocket. See it, see it by faith. See it in God's vision. Visualize it. If you have been weak and weak and weak and you always start, see yourself strong. Number one is believe. Number two is doubt it not. Number three is see it done. God told them, Abraham, in Genesis chapter 15, and said, Abraham, come out. Look at the stars and see the stars. Your children will be like that. And Abraham saw it. That time, Sarah was not pregnant yet, but... Abraham saw Sarah pregnant. Abraham imagined and visualized Sarah pregnant. And even before Sarah was pregnant, Abraham saw the belly of uh, the, the stomach of uh, Sarah protruding out for pregnancy. Abraham visualized and saw when she was delivering. Abraham saw and visualized Isaac being born. Abraham visualized as Isaac was being born. And he was already rejoicing because he could see it. He could see it. Believe that not and see it done. God was asking Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. He said, What seest thou? And then he told him what he saw. Then God said, I will hasten my word to perform it. You see it done, and the Lord will hasten his word to perform it. Then say it out. Say it out. Believe it. Doubt not. See it done. Say it out. In um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. If you have really believed, if you are, if you are releasing your faith, you will speak it out, you will say it out. You'll say it out. Because Jesus said, Whosoever shall say, shall say, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. There is something to say when you really believe. You know the woman said it out, If I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Say it out. That man that was blind said that I may receive my sight. Say it out. The centurion said, Speak the word only, my servant shall be healed. Say it out. The woman said, But the dross will eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Say it out. Say it out. The leper said, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Say it out. Elijah told Ahab, Buckle up and tie up and go on your chariot and, and, and begin to run because there is a sound of abundance of rain. Say it out. Moses told the people of the children of Israel today, the Egyptians will see today, you will see them no more forever. The Lord shall fight your battle. Say it out. You see, the people, when they believe, they said it out. They said it out. And that's how to release your faith. Believe it. Doubt it not. See it done. Say it out. Say it out. And uh, the Bible says here, we are having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. Therefore, we also believe and therefore we speak. We also believe and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. Number five, praise God for the answer. Praise God for the answer. Praise God for the answer. Don't wait until you've seen the manifestation. Keep praising the Lord for it. Believe, doubt not, see it done, say it out. Praise the Lord for the answer. Uh, you know that is what happened in Joshua chapter 6 verse 20. The walls of Jericho were high. The gates of Jericho were large. 
And the children of Israel wanted to enter in. And God told them, I have given it unto you. I have given it unto you. And they went around the first day. They went back to the camp. You know what they were doing? They were believing doubting not, seeing it done, saying it out in their camp. They were discussing one with another. Oh yes, those walls are going to come down. Those walls are going to come down. At the appointed time, those walls are going to come down. They believed. They doubted not. They saw it done. They said it out. And then on the seventh day, Joshua told them, now every one of you, adults, you come around. We're going to march around seven times and then when you hear the sound of the trumpet to shout the praise of God. They shouted, the walls came down. Praise the Lord for it. You praise the Lord when you believe. That's how to release your faith. And then in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 20. And they rose early in the morning. And went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. You know, they go together. Some people say, well, I believe God, only I don't believe the man of God. No, they go together. If you believe God, you believe his representative. You believe the one that God has sent. You believe his prophet, his true prophet, the man of God. Believe God, believe the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Uh, you know, sometimes we listen to these testimonies, and the testimonies are wonderful. There's a, a sister that lost um, a 12 year old daughter. And uh, you know they are living in a duplex, and uh, up, they were upstairs. And they gave the daughter a bucket of a bucket, and they said, "Now go downstairs and take a bucket of water and bring up." The girl took the bucket of water, dropped the bucket downstairs, and walked away. And they couldn't find her anymore. Twelve years of age. And uh, they looked for her everywhere; they couldn't find her. They searched for her everywhere; they couldn't find her. And then they brought the woman to me on Saturday. And as I prayed, I looked at the woman and said, Go and relax. I prayed. Your daughter, you'll find your daughter. And then she went back home. On Tuesday, somebody found that daughter and took the, the, the daughter to the father's office. When the father was coming back from the office, she called the mama and said, Mama, look, this is our daughter. God has brought the daughter back home. We prayed on Saturday and the child was found on Tuesday. That's a miracle. Isn't that a miracle? But you see, I told the person and the person believed. The person believed. Believe as prophet and so shall ye prosper. And so here they believe. Look at verse 21. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that they should praise the, be the beauty of holiness as they as they went before the army as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endure it forever and when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, moab and the mount, and mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten when they were praising the lord so praise god for the answer praise god for the answer number one is believe number two is doubt not number three is see it done number four is say it out Number five is praise God for the answer. Number six is act out your faith. Put action into your faith. The woman that had issue of blood said, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. All I need to do is to put action to my faith. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. You know the man that was blind, Jesus put clay on his eyes and said, Go to the pool Shiloh and go and wash and you will see. He put action to his face and he went to be made whole. You know the man that was blind, Jesus put clay on his eyes and said, Go to the pool Shiloh and go and wash and you will see. He put action to his face and he went and he washed and he saw. Action of faith. And you know that uh, the man that was lame, Jesus said, Rise, take up thy bed. The man rose up, he put action to his face. A man had a withered hand, 
and uh, Jesus uh, stretched forth your hand. That's an action he needed to do, but he didn't say, no, I can't stretch forth the hand. It is withered. I can't do anything about it. Uh, this is what I've been suffering. Begin to tell stories. He stretched forth his hand. He put action to his face, and he began to see. The ten lepers that came to the Lord Jesus Christ, go and show yourself to the priest. That's the action of faith. And as they went, they were cleansed. So then, how do you release your faith? Believe when you are prayed. Doubt it not. Say, see it done. Visualize it in your mind. And see that it is done. Say it out. Praise God for the answer. And act out your faith. As you pray, this is what you are going to do tonight. And as you release your faith tonight, the Lord is going to walk miraculously with you in Jesus' name. Do you know that the blind man that saw at the second miracle revival hour, I didn't even mention blindness at all, at all, at all. I didn't. I didn't pray for, you know, what problem one by one, one by one. I just said, now, you are going to do what I've taught you. You are going to pray. And after the prayer, you are going to, rele you are going to release your faith. You will believe and doubt not, see it, don't say it out, praise God for the answer and act out your faith. And this person that had never come before, this was the first time. I said, now you ask the Lord whatever you want. They did. I said, now release your faith. They did. Then I prayed. I said, I also release my faith. And when we finished, that man just opened his eyes and everything became clear. And there are other people that received miracles as well. And uh, today too, in your own session, if you release your faith, a miracle is on the way for you. A miracle is on the way for you. A miracle is on the way for you. Rise up and let us pray now. Whatever your need may be, you pray to the Lord first. Ask the Lord what you want. Ask the Lord what you want. Speak to your mountain. You tell the mountain to move away. It will move away. Believe. Doubt not. See it done. Say it out. Praise God for the answer. Act out your faith. That means... You believe it is none. You praise God for the answer. There is no doubt at all. You see it on, you say it out. Then you act out your faith. Whatever you are not able to do before you do it. Because it is none. Because it is none. Because it is done. Amen. As I pray for you now. You have released your faith, I also release my faith. And if you and I can agree as touching anything, anything, if two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask on the face of the earth, it will be done for us of our Father who is in heaven. And you think about you that I'm praying for you alone. Forget about other people. Whatever need you have, ask the Lord, I am in agreement with you. And as I release my faith on your behalf, As I release my face on your behalf, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. If the devil has been chasing you, he has to run back from you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Bow your head and close your eyes. The person whose wife has um, abandoned and has bragged that she'll never come back to that home. And you have tried all your best and that wife has never come back. If you raise up your hand, will release faith on your behalf and that wife will come back to you. Where are you? Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever stone, whatever mountain is in the heart of that woman that makes her to say she'll never come back, you mountain, I talk to you right now. Come out in Jesus' name. You devil that is holding that woman back, that will not allow her to come back to the house of the husband, I rebuke you in the power and the authority of the Lord. Leave that woman alone in Jesus' name. You woman, come back home. Yeah. 
wherever you are now the Holy Ghost is catching you come back home thank you father because I know it is none in Jesus mighty name we pray amen I see that woman packing her load coming back home coming back home coming back home Amen. Amen. A person on my left hand side that is having that terrible headache or something, as if they are taking something to beat your head very violently, you just raise up your hand and that thing will vanish away. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command right now that the headache that is so terrible, pounding, pounding in the head, will come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed. When I was giving that testimony of that young boy at Elorin that was, uh, you know, the clothes was being soaked with uh, urine. And I was giving that testimony telling you that uh, God just worked miracle that Friday night and the boy was delivered. There was somebody there that was saying in his own heart, saying, Oh Lord, if you'll touch me like you that touch that little boy because of this uh, urinary problem I have, if you can do it for me, oh Lord, I'll just be grateful to you. When I was giving that testimony, that's what you were saying in your heart. If you are there, you raise up your hand, I'll be praying for you. Amen. That's the person. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come right now in your power. And I pray for all these people who are raising up their hands. Whatever the problem in their urinary tract or system, remove it in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. That woman that has found it difficult to have intimate relationship with your husband because of an evil object that will come and uh, come to molest you and assault you. A woman having that problem of that assault of the devil and also you feel some infection in a part I don't want to mention in your body. Terrible, terrible infection in your body and uh, sometimes the way you want to scratch yourself uh, can bring shame in the public now heads bowed eyes closed that woman can raise up her hand and uh, that problem will vanish away I'm waiting for the woman to raise up her hand father in the name of jesus lord i pray right now that your power will come upon that woman and that evil personality that has been molesting that woman, assaulting that woman, I command you in the authority and anointing of the Holy Ghost, come away from her in Jesus' name. That infection, I destroy it. That infection, I cancel it. And I pray that you will be well completely in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. That person that has been having that incessant kata, the Lord tells me to tell you that that kata is gone right now. You don't even need to raise up your hand. It's gone already. The one that has uh, that terrible pain on the right knee, in the right knee, if you touch it, it will pain you, pain you to your very heart. If you raise up your hand, the pain will vanish away. Father, I thank you because of what you have said. Remove that pain right now. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. The person that if you put your head on a pillow at night, it will look like it's a stone you are putting your head upon. You have changed your pillow a number of times and yet the problem is still there and you are wondering what is the problem. And uh, the problem is in the head area. It's been bothering you like that over and over. You have prayed. And uh, if you're sleeping, sometimes the sleep will just cut off because that pillow is as hard as a stone. You've changed it a number of times. The thing is still there. If you raise up your hand, the problem is going right now. Where are you? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this problem, you take it away from the heads and the bodies of these individuals in Jesus' name. You devil, pack your load and go. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. 
Amen. The person that has just started uh, a new business be, uh, between now and uh, the last two months, who so just started a new business, and you are wondering if uh, this thing will prosper or not, it's a new business you have just started. If you raise up your hand, I'm here to make that thing prosper. Make uh, all the things you're expecting in that business to come as you expect. And you'll see the miracle of the Lord on that business. So you've just started it between now and uh, two months ago. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all these who are raising up their hands. And Lord, I'm asking right now that whatever they touch, whatever they touch, will have the blessing of the Lord upon it in Jesus' name. Prosper their business. Prosper everything that they do. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Whatever you have prayed for, I'm going to release my faith on your behalf. Whatever it is. Whatever it is, anything the doctor told you and you know that that thing is a bad thing, you want the Lord to remove it and you are prayed and you are releasing your faith, I will release my faith on your behalf. That person that has had that temptation of sin and it appears that you are going to just fall and fall and fall and fall and you are prayed about it tonight, I'm going to release my faith on your behalf. The victory is definite and the victory is coming on you in Jesus' name. So whatever it is, just raise up your hand. Just raise up your hand. And I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking that the blessings you have given to all these people will abide and remain with them in Jesus' name. And the devil will not be able to touch them anymore. Witches and wizards will not be able to touch them anymore. What you have done will remain and be permanent in Jesus' name. Protect everyone as we go back. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.